morning, everyone. Uh, the first item of business this morning is general questions. Uh, short questions and answers, as always, would be appreciated. Question one, Richard Baker. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to support public sector recruitment in the North East. Secretary John Swinney. Said, officer, the recruitment of staff is a matter for individual public sector organisations for which the Government provides a strong level of public funding to support this task. The Government also has a range of policies to support those who are finding uh, times difficult financially. Our pay policy focuses resources on the lower paid by promoting the Scottish living wage alongside distinctive measures to address low pay. Richard Baker. Thank you. Given the Cabinet Secretary agreed to discuss an Aberdeen waiting and salaries with public sector employees in the city and region last May to aid recruitment, can I ask what steps have been taken as a result of that undertaking? As I understand, one Scottish Government agency in the city has already uplifted wages to reflect the high cost of living in Aberdeen. Does this not make the case for Scottish Government to support other public sector employees in the city in the same way? Cabinet Secretary. There is an existing element of Scottish public sector pay policy which enables public sector organisations on the current arrangements to make specific arrangements where they find it challenging to recruit individuals because of a particularly competitive labour market. Uh, those provisions exist already. They have been exercised. I know this has been the subject of public comment from within, um, within Aberdeen in relation to Marine Scotland. Those arrangements exist for uh, public bodies who operate under the government's public sector pay policy for them to take appropriate steps if they can demonstrate the market issues that have to be addressed as a consequence of paying um, the uh, particular uh, uh, support that is required to recruit for key vacancies. Thanks, Christian Allard. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that the development of affordable housing as a Craig Inch's prison site with a target market of public sector workers demonstrates the Scottish Government's commitment to the recruitment and retainment of public sector staff in the North East. Secretary. Uh, Officer, I think that uh, Mr Lard makes uh, a very good and strong point. The Government has acted in collaboration with NHS Grampian to ensure that the site of the former Craig Inches prison is identified and is taken forward um, in consort with the local authority into the bargain. Uh, to provide accommodation for key workers um, in the city, uh, recognising the challenges that will exist in relation to access to the housing market. This is, of course, in addition to the £47.6 million pounds for um, affordable housing support that is made available by the Government to uh, Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire Councils um, to assist in developing a, a broader range of affordable housing units. Um, but the, Craig Inches, uh, uh, the former Craig Inches prison site was a particular initiative that the Government took to recognise the difficulties and challenges that will exist in access to affordable housing for key public sector workers. And I'm delighted that we've been able to make progress on that question. Thank you. Briefly, Nanette Milne, please. Thank you. Um, I'm sure the Minister would agree with me that a very important area of concern in Aberdeen in particular is the difficulty in recruiting, particularly senior health professionals, and then retaining them in their posts once they discover the cost of housing in the area. Now, I, know, I know about the Craig Inches proposals, which I don't think would be necessarily uniformly what's wanted. And I know the Government has been considering what could be done to alleviate the situation. Can, can, so can the Cabinet Secretary give me any information on whether suitable housing might be available for incoming staff to either purchase or to rent? Absolutely. Clearly, there will be a range of uh, housing providers that uh, are active in the market in the northeast of Scotland, and the investment the government is making in the Aberdeen Western Periphery will also open up new opportunities for housing development significantly on the periphery of the city um, into the bargain. Um, I, I would reiterate to uh, Nanette Milne the points that I made in my response to, to, to Christian Allard that where the government has been able to take forward an opportunity to expand the availability of affordable housing through the Craig Inches site, we've acted quickly and decisively to secure that for the public good, in addition to a strong programme of investment the government has made in supporting the housing market in the north-east of Scotland. Thank you very much. Question two, Nigel Don. Thank you, presiding officer, to ask the Scottish Government how it ensures that consistently high standards are maintained by staff in the care sector. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. Consistently high standards are maintained through the regulation of the social services workforce by the Scottish Social Services Council. Social care staff must register with them and comply with the Council's Code of Practice, which sets out the standards that workers must meet. 
The quality of staffing in care services is also assessed as part of all care inspectorate inspections. The care inspectorate has a range of enforcement powers which services must comply with or face closure. In 2013-14, 91% of care services were awarded grades of good, very good or excellent for the quality of staffing. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her response, which of course deals directly with the quality of staff. But in the second of the 2014 Wreath Lectures, Dr. Atul Goander focused on systems in healthcare, from simple health checks, sorry, simple checklists to complex mechanisms and processes. He argued they could be better designed to transform care from the richest parts of the world to the poorest. Does the Minister agree with me that simple systems of checklists in our care setting for elderly patients would have a significant impact on their well-being? For example, for my constituent's mother who suffers from a month's dementia, does not receive regular and adequate hydration, Briefly, whilst please. her caregivers have regular and legislated rest breaks. Um, can I say to, to Nigel Dawn that we do have in place a, a range of national care standards that describe what individuals can expect from a care provider. Uh, they focus on the, the quality of life that the person using the service actually experiences. The standards for care homes for older people, for example, cover day-to-day -day life, including keeping well and eating well. And on the issue of hydration, that includes a standard that uh, an individual can have hot and cold drinks whenever they like. It is up to the service providers to ensure that they're meeting such standards. Uh, and this could uh, include the use of checklists, but the focus must be on caring for the individual and their needs. Briefly, Mary Scanlon. Does the Cabinet Secretary think it's fair that many councils in Scotland fund the council care sector at a rate of up to 80% higher than the independent sector, yet the same high quality standards are rightly expected by all care providers? Cabinet Secretary. I am aware of, of this being a very long-standing issue um, and when I was Minister for Public Health it was an issue that uh, was, was regularly raised. What I can say to, to Mary Scanlon is that we have uh, some very good um, discussions going on with, uh, with Scottish, through Scottish Care uh, about uh, how we can better support uh, the, the sector to, uh, to, to respond in the way that we need it to respond, not just in terms of, of care homes, but care at home as well. And I'd be happy to keep Mary Scanlon updated of, of how those discussions are going. Many thanks. Question three, Chick Brodie. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what action it will take as a result of the statutory follow-up to the Council Commission report on South Asia Council of February 2014. Minister Marco Biaggi. Local authorities must use resources as efficiently as possible and deliver services effectively to ensure taxpayers get the best possible value. The Accounts Commission published a best value report on South Ayrshire in February 2014 and a further report in December 2014. The latter report notes that the Council has made a good start in developing an improved framework to help it demonstrate best value. The Council now needs to continue the improvements it has started in order to help deliver improved services and achieve better outcomes for the people of South Ayrshire. The Local Government Minister normally writes to the Council Leader when a Best Value report is published, and I did so in the case of South Ayrshire. In that letter, I noted the progress which has been made and reiterated the Accounts Commission's findings in relation to the need for effective implementation and sustained improvements. I will be taking a close interest in the Council's progress and in the further report, which the Controller of Audit has been asked to prepare within 18 months. Thank you. Chick Brody. Uh, I thank the Minister for his answer and I too welcome the December update of the Accounts Commission review which indicated some improvement in the Council's performance. Will the Minister agree that South Asia Council, and this might also be applied to all other Councils, that the Council should have a limited number of key performance outcomes which are made more widely known to its citizens and that all would benefit by ensuring its performance against these key indicators are produced quarterly and communicated appropriately, appropriately to those same citizens? Minister? Uh, councils do have to publish performance information that's specified by the Accounts Commission and under the 2014 direction published in December there are three headline indicators of corporate management, service performance and how much reporting is taking place against the requirements of the local government benchmarking framework. A lot of that is published uh, online with support from councils and the Scottish Government supports this approach but certainly any council is free to be proactive in publishing and promoting performance data of this sort especially when it is already collected and that can only help ensure that there is greater transparency and that local 
citizens have a, an idea of how their council is performing and ensures that local government is paired with an informed local democracy. Many thanks. Question four, Bill Kidd. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it has had with the UK Government regarding the publication of draft legislation arising from the recommendations of the Smith Commission. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Mr. Officer, there have been a number of contacts with the UK Government at official and ministerial level to take forward implementation of the conclusions of the Smith Commission. I have been assured by the Secretary of State for Scotland that the Scottish Government will be fully involved in further work to develop draft clauses for publication later this month. Thank you. Bill Kidd. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that reply. Can I ask uh, what plans or discussions have uh, already been taken by the Scottish Government regarding early action on transferring powers which do not require primary legislation? The Secretary. The Scottish Government uh, uh, has set out to the UK Government a number of areas where we believe it is possible and practical for powers to be transferred in early course. One of the most significant priorities that was advanced by the First Minister in her discussion with the Prime Minister in December was the issue around uh, 16 and 17 year olds being able to vote in the 2016 general election and uh, for this parliament and uh, progress has been made in that respect. There are of course a number of other areas of activity where we would like to see swifter progress, not least of which is on the, delegation, the devolution of the work programme um, which we believe, uh, which the Smith Commission said should be the subject of early devolution and which the government is concerned is the subject of contract extension, which we believe breaches the spirit of the Smith Commission report. Thank you, McNeill. Presiding officer, the cabinet secretary will sure, uh, I'm sure, be aware of the Scottish Labour's call yesterday for section 106 order to be brought forward to transfer the responsibility for the job creating powers of the work programme to the Scottish Government ministers. Uh, and we've had some positive uh, comments of support, particularly from Glasgow and Edinburgh City Councils, on this. Um, can I ask the minister if the Scottish Government will also support this call? And it's actually the, with the greatest of respect to Duncan McNeill, he obviously hasn't been listening for some considerable number of weeks because we have made the point to Parliament, consistent with the Smith Commission report, in which the Smith Commission said that the work programme was one of the areas that could be the subject of early devolution. We as a government have been concerned that at the same time as that report was being finalised, the DWP was consulting about extending the existing work programme contracts and not enabling early and timorous devolution of the responsibility to the Scottish Parliament. So I welcome Mr McNeill's support for what the Government has been trying to do. Uh, I would encourage him to use every um, uh, opportunity he has to say to the United Kingdom Government, consistent with the spirit of the Smith Commission, that there should be early devolution of the work programme so we can ensure that that work programme is configured in a fashion to meet the needs and the expectations of individuals that want to access employment in Scotland. Annabel Goldie. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, like many in Scotland, I look forward to the launch and the publication of draft clauses later this month, and I hope the Cabinet Secretary will uh, respond in a far less curmudgeonly manner to that yeah, exciting yeah. development that he did to the Smith Agreement, yeah, which um, seemed to frazzle in his hand within 24 hours of the agreement <laughs> being published. But can I, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, Deputy Presiding Officer, Everybody now accepts that the political debate in Scotland has moved on from what powers this Parliament has or will get to what we do with the powers. So can I ask him, for example, in relation to air passenger duty, about which he is so enthusiastic in bringing forward as a devolved uh, facility here, will he, given that power, uh, abolish that duty or is he just going to reduce it? Well, uh, being accused of being curmudgeonly by Annabel Goldie is a bit like the pot being called, calling the kettle black. If I can be so ungallant on a Thursday morning to Barnes Goldie. Um, on, the, uh, on the issue of air passenger duty, um, that is one of the topics that we have said to the United Kingdom Government we think merits early devolution. Uh, we also made clear in the White Paper exactly what our proposal would be on reducing air passenger duty. 
I have reaffirmed that position, as other ministers have to Parliament, and I would urge the United Kingdom Government to take speedy and timorous action to devolve the responsibility to allow the Scottish Parliament to do something different to the regime that is currently put in place by the United Kingdom Government. Yeah, thanks. Question five, Linda Fabiani. Uh, to thank the Scottish, sorry, to ask the Scottish Government, I might thank her after her answer. <laughs> I hope. Uh, what progress has been made in integrating health and social care in Lanarkshire? Secretary Shona Robertson. Good progress has been made in South Lanarkshire to integrate adult health and social care. A Shadow Chief Officer and Shadow Integration Joint Board have been appointed and are making significant progress in line with their agreed work plan. Linda Fabiani. <clears throat> Uh, may I say to the Cabinet Secretary, thank you for an answer. <laughs> and can I also say, though, that there is real concern um, in my constituency of East Kilbride about hospital discharge delays because of the lack of home care packages. And I have many constituency cases just now where people are really being disadvantaged in, being, in their sense of well-being. Can I ask her if she's confident that things are moving forward well towards the date of 1st April for full implementation. And um, what dialogue is, in fact, being held with South Lanarkshire Council and NHS Briefly, Lanarkshire please. to make sure that this is really working towards an integrated package? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I, can I thank the member uh, for her uh, question? The Health Board and the local authority in South Lanarkshire are making good progress towards submitting their integration scheme for approval by the, the 1st of April. I'm, I am confident that they're on track to put in place their integrated arrangements during the coming year. I have said many times, and I'll say again, that tackling uh, delayed discharge is absolutely uh, the top priority uh, for me. We've been working very hard with partnerships uh, over the last uh, few weeks, and we will continue to do so. Uh, I can tell the member that we recently allocated £300,000 to the partners in South Lanarkshire, which is being matched by the Council and the Health Board to make sure that they have the services in place to be able to make sure that patients can flow through the hospital and either back home or into a, a care home place. I could also say to the member that the latest uh, delayed discharge census, there were 16 uh, South Lanarkshire residents delayed in hospital for more than for more than four weeks, but I can say that the local information recently indicates that this now is considerably reduced, and I hope that's something the member will welcome. Thank you. Briefly, Richard Simpson. Thank you. Um, can I say that uh, to Linda Fabiani that the uh, delayed discharge is not just a problem in her constituency, but can I ask the Cabinet Secretary whether she will meet with the health, opposition health teams to give us an update on the progress on health and social care integration, particularly in relation to budgets? And will she ensure that the integrated resources framework for each local authority and health board area is published now so that the budgets can reflect those frameworks? Um, Secretary. Uh, can I say to Richard that so I'm very happy to provide that briefing. There is a lot of work going on with individual partnerships uh, to, first of all, to help them through the, the winter uh, period where there are obviously significant challenges. But also going forward, we have to make sure that we take absolute advantage of the integration coming forward from the, the 1st of April. And I'm very happy to give uh, Richard Simpson and the other opposition spokespeople a full update on the, the plans that are being put in place to make sure we do that. Many thanks. Margaret Mitchell. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government when it last met representatives of NHS Lanarkshire and NHS Fourth Valley. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. The Scottish Government meet regularly with representatives of NHS Lanarkshire and NHS Fourth Valley to discuss issues of interest. Thank the Cabinet sure. Secretary for that answer. Is she aware that many NHS health boards, like NHS Lanarkshire, are giving a directive regarding a cheaper drug to be prescribed for certain routine complaints and infections rather than a tried and tested drug to patients with repeat prescriptions? This frequently results in the patient then experiencing side effects, having to make a follow-up appointment and the original pr repeat prescription having to be issued. Given all of this and the cost implications involved, does the Cabinet Secretary consider this is an issue that should be looked into? Well, can I, can I say to uh, Margaret Mitchell that um, these are, are clinical decisions, but I am more than happy to look into the case that she cites, and if she wants to write to me with more information, then I'll certainly have a, a full look at the detail of the issue she raises. 
Many thanks. And we now move to the next item of business, which is...